Siegfried is a character who relies on perfectly timing button presses in order to chain stronger attacks together shortly after the attacks connect. And if you know anything about me, you should know this kind of playstyle resonated with me very hard when I first tried it, since it reminded me of art canceling in Xenoblade. And needless to say, I got very excited by that fact. To really bring out his potential as a character, you need to be very good at timing these. And while his damage isn't the most impressive in the game, he does have a lot of very valuable utility and defensive options for teams with very high stun damage and party-wide damage reduction and debuff immunity. This makes him a pretty valuable asset to team compositions if other characters can carry the damage load, and in this video I want to discuss Siegfried, discuss general playstyle and setup, talk about some strengths and weaknesses, and showcase some practical use in harder raid fights. If you enjoy guide content on this game, RPGs in general, and especially Xenoblade, and are interested in seeing more, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much and I will love you forever. Let's get into it. As a character, Siegfried isn't too overly complex with a ton of hyper-specific tech, more so being a character about timing. His first support skill, Deliverance, allows him to enhance his normal attacks if they are chained perfectly. Essentially, much of Siegfried's damage will come from using Perfect Execution, a combo finisher attack that is obtained from timing the normal attack button perfectly four times in a row after hits. The timing is slightly after the attack connects, not at the moment the attack connects. This can be a little awkward to get used to, but once you understand the general principle, it isn't too hard to get the timing. If you land all of your combo attacks in a row perfectly, you have the ability to press the combo finisher button and use Perfect Execution, which is why in my case. This is a very high damage finisher attack. If you use his normal attacks without perfectly chaining, you will not be able to perform this combo finisher, and your normal attacks will do reduced damage as well, so nailing the timing is going to be very important. His second support skill is Drakenblut. This gives you Stout Heart or the ability to not be interrupted while performing your combo finisher attacks, so essentially your perfect execution and your lunge. The lunge attack is pretty nice because it can act as an effective gap closer, but should never be used for damage purposes. Siegfried also has built-in Stout Heart while executing perfectly timed attacks, meaning you usually are not going to be getting interrupted by enemies even if you are taking damage, which can be very nice, especially combined with his defensive buffs. You can also dodge cancel out of perfectly chained attacks and continue the combo you were doing before, which can be nice to reposition or dodge an attack while in the middle of a combo. Link attacks will also allow you to continue your combo afterwards, and if used during an attack within the combo, can allow you to skip the animation for that attack and move to the next attack immediately, which can be really nice for the last attack before the finisher. And if you're lucky enough to get the timing right, you can also link attack during a perfect execution, and if you time it before you hit the ground, you'll be able to use another perfect finisher again immediately after the link attack, which can maximize the damage you have, which can be really nice. His aerial attacks are pretty worthless, so I don't really recommend using them ever. It is also worth mentioning you can combo out of Lunge or one of his skills that Gap Close to immediately start the perfect execution combo, meaning he can be one of the best characters for sticking on bosses, and Lunge can even be used mid-combo while not interrupting perfect execution, allowing you to continue combos even if bosses run away if they don't jump too far that you can't close the gap. If this happens after the final perfect attack though, you'll be stuck with the perfect execution that might whiff, which is really unfortunate. As a general gameplay loop, you want to land as many perfect executions as you can, since for the most part, they are your highest source of damage. After landing one of these, you can cancel it into a skill or dodge out of it to cancel the ending lag of the move if needed. As a character, Siegfried has a really high stun damage compared to most of the cast, so even if his actual damage isn't high, he can still often fill the stun meter really fast even by himself sometimes, allowing for quicker link attacks which can stop the enemy attacks, and sometimes even help you skip phases of combat which can be one of his strongest uses as a character. He also has great defensive utility, as mentioned earlier, with built-in Stout Heart and the ability to stick to enemies as a melee easier than other characters, along with great defensive skills. So while on the surface he might seem outclassed by higher DPS characters, what he offers to the team is still valuable, and he's still a really fun character to use as well. That should cover most of the basic information of the character. Any additional gameplay info will be in the skills and gameplay section, so let's get into setup. So my setup for the score attack run at the beginning of the video is very slightly different than what you see here. Just replace the stun power and the Aegis with another supplementary damage 5 and with glass cannon in order to do as much damage as possible. For the general setup that I would recommend in most normal play and against actual proud mode raids, I am once again running the terminus weapon because it is simply the best weapon in the game to have. If you do not have the terminus weapon, the crit rate weapon or the ascender weapon will work just fine, however. Obviously, the Terminus weapon is going to be the best option, though, because it has the Catastrophe bonus effect, which increases your damage cap by 100% and an attack plus 50% when you're below 45,000 health, making it just easily the best option you have. And Sigil Booster is a very good trade as well when you have uh, fully awakened the Terminus weapon, because it increases all of your Sigil traits by one level, giving you even more benefit out of your Sigils, which is really awesome to have. 
Dragon Slayer's ingenuity is one of his unique traits. This will shorten his skill cooldowns when you land a perfect execution, which is really nice. When you land a combo finisher, you get a 3% reduction on your skill cooldown, and then upon using perfect execution, you get another 5% reduction on your skill cooldowns, meaning you can use all of your skills a lot faster when you're able to land more perfect executions. This is a really, really good skill for Siegfried to have because you're able to use your skills a lot more often if you're able to land perfect executions, which is very, very nice, as you might imagine. Now, you might notice that you do not see the other unique sub-trait that Siegfried has. That is because that unique sub-trait is not actually useful for practical purposes, because all it really does is offer Stout Heart to Siegfried while he is doing combos, which you already have innately. So, essentially what this does is give you a 20% defense buff and makes it so you cannot be interrupted by foe attacks for 10 seconds. Now, once again, if you are using your perfect combo attacks and using perfect execution, you already have Stout Heart. You already can't be interrupted by enemy attacks, which is what you should be doing anyway. So that part is not very beneficial. The 20% defense buff can be nice, but if you are able to use a bunch of perfect executions, you also have a defense skill, which should have almost 100% uptime for the most part. So you'll be able to take advantage of that anyway. So it doesn't really matter to run this in most practical situations. So if you have a... Dragon Slayer's Ingenuity with a good sub-trait, it's going to be better to just run that. It's better to run that than to run Dominance. It's better to run that than to run the Awakening even. So that's just the uh, logic behind that. As far as the sub-trait I have on Dragon Slayer Ingenuity, I have linked together. This is just a really useful uh, party support ability that I just like running on every single set myself. Gives you more link attack damage, allows you to get more link gauge gain, meaning you can get to uh, link time sooner. Gives you more damage on uh, Skybound Arts and Chain Attacks as well, which is really nice. And then I have a couple critical hit rate 5 pluses. These are not in the correct order here, but this just gives me uh, more critical hit rate. Even with two of these, I'm not hitting 100% because I don't have an uh, overmastery effect with critical hit rate up with the character right now, so that's a little unfortunate. But I have Stamina and Tyranny as the sub-trait on these. These uh, boost my attack a pretty significant amount for both of these. Tyranny is a 36% boost at the cost of 20% of your max health. And then Stamina, as long as I remain at 100% health, it's a 51% attack boost. So just two very nice attack boosts to ensure that I am uh, basically hitting damage cap on pretty much every move that I have, essentially, along with uh, the sub-traits on my weapon, which I forgot to explain. So let me go back and do that. So I'm running Critical Hit Rate uh, Imbued Trait here to uh, reach as much Critical Hit Rate as I can. I have a Guts on this as well, because I couldn't really fit it as a Sigil sub-trait conveniently into my uh, current set like I wanted to. And then I have life on the line because uh, Siegfried just has so much defense and he has the ability to drain with one of his skills as well. And uh, with Potion Hoarder as well, you shouldn't really be needing any healing from your teammates. So it doesn't really matter that I'm running life on the line. That's just the last little bit of extra damage there to make sure I'm hitting caps. A free 15% uh, attack boost, which is pretty nice. And Guts is really, really nice to... Uh, basically, on it's, it's since it's not level 15, I'm not getting a huge benefit out of it. But basically every... Uh, Five and a half minutes, if fights somehow last that long, you get at least one freebie. So at least one freebie per fight, you live with one HP no matter what. Really nice uh, sub-trait to have. And then I'm running War Elemental. This is also a uh, almost required sub-trait just for giving you a free 20% damage boost that ignores damage cap. All attacks count as Superior Element. Very good effect to have. Run it on basically everyone if you got the ability to. And then I've got my Obligatory. Uh, four damage cap, five pluses. Two of these have Quick Cooldown on them. Damage cap, obviously, you want to be hitting the maximum for damage cap to make sure you're doing as much damage as you can. Quick cooldown is great on Siegfried. Just having all those ways to reduce your cooldowns even further, along with Dragon Slayer's Ingenuity, is awesome. One level of Cascade gives you most of the benefit out of that as well, meaning you're able to use your important skills more often, you're able to use your buffs more often for your party, you're able to use your gap closer more often, and you're able to use your really high stun attack more often, which we'll talk about a little bit later because we're not even at the skills section yet, but... Siegfried and skill cooldown reduction is a very good combination at the very least. And then I am running a stun power. I normally would not run one of these just raw on a character, but I think it's very, very efficient on Siegfried just because he has extremely high stun damage already. You're able to basically fill stun meters by yourself, and this can actually be more useful than you think just from my experience playing him because it allows you to kind of skip some phases, stop attacks when the enemies are doing them. And it's just really nice to be able to kind of instantly go into link attacks as soon as stun bar is available if you know how to time your stun damage right. So really, really nice uh, sigil to have, actually. Simple, nimble Onslaught is the other trait that I have attached to this because I didn't really have anything better to put here. This gives, uh, with one level, two seconds of invincibility, additional two seconds of invincibility after uh, dodging an attack with a perfect dodge, and also gives you even more skill cooldown. So I figured, why not? It might be a good way to uh, increase your skill cooldowns even further. Also gives you even more SBA gauge, which is uh, one of the things Siegfried struggles to uh, build compared to some other characters. So can be pretty nice to have that gauge gain for SBA as well. 
Also worth mentioning, I have Potion Hoarder on one of my damage caps since I didn't mention it before. Obviously, just run this on everyone. Really, really good effect to have. Gives you a ton of additional potions. Gives you a lot of self-healing. Pretty nice to have on Siegfried, especially if you're running life on the line. I have uh, two supplementary damage fives. This is just uh, additional 20% damage whenever it procs, and it has a 3 force percent or 3 force chance to proc, essentially, almost. So 75, 74% of the time, technically, you'll be uh, landing this and uh, getting an additional 20% damage, so that's pretty nice to have just as a general effect. If you can fit three on your set with some better sub-trait positions, that can be nice as well, at the very least. And then finally, I'm just running an Aegis 5+. Plus. This gives me the last uh, levels of quick cooldown I need, and also allows me to reach uh, 41,000 health, which is pretty nice because it gives you a little bit more safety on the character to make sure you're not dying in one hit when you don't have your defense buff up, which is really nice. So let's talk about Siegfried's skills now. Now, I am going to intentionally not pronounce the name of this first skill because if I say how I think it's pronounced, I'm going to give voice clips to people that do not deserve those voice clips. So I'm just going to say that this is a very good skill to have. It is a multi-slash lunge, which can be used as a very effective gap closer from across the field that is chainable into your perfect execution combo. This is a very, very nice for not only starting your combo, but for just gap closing on enemies. You also gain stout heart while you're using it. Absolutely run this at all times. If you're able to uh, go into your perfect execution combo afterwards, you also have stout heart during that, meaning you are able to just kind of go in on an enemy and not be interrupted by anything they are doing, which is very, very nice. Nelanov is his next skill. I also recommend running this pretty much at all time because this is one of his highest stun damage attacks in the game. Now, depending on how you use this move and how you are spaced from the enemy when you use it, this can potentially hit twice. If you are perfectly spaced from the enemy, the projectile and the edge of the sword will also hit the enemy, meaning you'll get two hits out of this attack, which can be really, really nice, and it can do an absolutely crazy amount of stun damage, which can fill the meter of a lot of large enemies by itself almost. And if you're able to chain into your combo afterwards, you can almost single-handedly fill the stun gauge. This is a very, very good damaging ability. It's also probably his highest damaging ability if you're able to land both hits of it, which is very nice. If you're too close, you will not get it, and if you're too far, you'll not get it. So you want to be perfectly spaced. If an enemy is really big, you'll probably be able to land both hits regardless, though, so that's pretty nice also. Next up, we have Salvatore. For general use, I also recommend running this. This grants a debuff immunity and drain to the entire party while it is active. Debuff immunity is great. It can nullify all status ailments. Very nice for some of the really annoying status ailments like uh, Glaciate, Sand Tomb, and stuff like that. It's probably going to be really nice in future raids where status ailments are going to be more important as well. So this is a really nice party support ability. It also grants Drain, which is a little bit less useful because of how prominent Potion Hoarder is and just how easy it is to heal in general right now. But... Still decently nice and goes along pretty well with his last ability that I recommend running for more general use, which is Mirage. Drain is a lot more valuable with Mirage because uh, Mirage is a nice just flat 70% defense boost to the entire party, which is pretty insane damage mitigation. And uh, when you have that much damage mitigation, Drain becomes more valuable because you're healing a higher percentage of the damage that you are taking. So that is really nice to have as well. I definitely recommend running Mirage. It's one of the best party support utility defensive abilities in the entire game. Second, probably only to Vayne's Bubble just because you're able to continuously move and attack outside of this while keeping this defense boost. And uh, if you have enough cooldown reduction, you're able to land a decent amount of perfect execution. You'll be able to keep this up almost the entire fight. It really depends on how enemy phases work and uh, how many you can fit in, but this is still a very, very nice boost to the entire party. Very big good party support ability. And uh, in most general playthroughs, I would recommend using this. As far as his other four skills, uh, we got Lombre de here. I do not know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably not. Uh, this is just a parry and counter attack. This can be okay if you are just doing solo play, but most of the time I would not recommend running this. But uh, it's not necessarily a bad ability, just outclassed by his other very, very good abilities that we've already seen. Menigance, this is a self buff that boosts attack and defense of Siegfried. Now, Siegfried does not have a hard time hitting damage caps. You only need a couple boosters on his uh, sigils to hit that, so the attack boost is not really that useful, and the defense boost is outclassed by your other defense boost, so... Uh, you don't really need this skill in most practical play, especially because it's not party-wide. You're not offering nearly as much benefit to the team when you're using this, so I don't really recommend running this either. Verdragon? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right either. This is actually an okay ability to run sometimes, uh, depending on who you are playing with and what fight you are doing. This can be a nice effect to have. If you're not worried about enemy beat debuffs, don't think you'll need drain. This can be a pretty good skill to have because it's just a nice shockwave. Lowers enemy defense when it hits. Does a decent amount of damage as well. Has a nice cooldown that you can use this to cancel out of your uh, perfect execution also. So another pretty nice skill to have. It's not something that is required by any means. I generally recommend running the four skills that I recommended earlier most of the time. But this can be nice depending on the enemy. And then we have Draconic Release. Uh, I don't really recommend reusing this at all. 
It's just a attack boost every time you land a perfectly timed combo attack and a combo finisher. It's like okay, but when you miss time an attack, you completely lose it. And even then, you're probably hitting caps without this anyway, so you don't really need this. It's don't don't run this. Even even Menigans is probably gonna be more useful if you want to run an attack boost if you're not hitting damage caps yet. So that should cover his skills. Let's take a look at uh, Overmasteries now. Now, my Overmasteries for this character aren't really that good, and I didn't really have uh, time to save Scum and try to get some better Overmasteries here, so I just took some that seemed good enough. Normal attack damage cap up's really nice. I do have some stun power, only six, but I do have some stun power, so you even have, have even more stun power with the character, allowing you to stun enemies even easier. So that's pretty nice to have. And skill damage cap up is another really good one. Obviously, you want normal attack cap up and skill damage cap up to get the most benefit out of uh, all of these overmasters for the most part because that allows you to deal more damage which is always really nice. The skybound art damage up is okay since uh, that's usually the hardest thing to cap but it's not really the most impactful thing to have. Ideally you'll have a uh, full skill damage cap up, full dome world damage cap up and you'll have some critical hit rate. I don't have any critical hit rate so even though I'm running two critical hit rate sigils I'm still only at 95% critical hit rate. I would need at least 6% to hit 100%, and if you have 20% that you can get from Overmasters, you only you can actually hit 100% while only running one crit rate sigil, which can be really nice, but unfortunately I do not have those as my Overmastery bonuses right now, but for the uh, general purposes of this video and for the general setup that I have, I think the setup is fine. Now obviously if you've got some better uh, Overmasteries and better sub-traits on your sigils, you can have an even better setup than I do, but I think this is fine for now. So I think that covers it for any information related to setup and any kind of basic info regarding the character. Let's take a look at more practical gameplay application now. Once again, there will probably be a couple proud mode raid spoilers here, so if you are concerned about that, just be please be aware of that. So I'm going to showcase two different fights because they have ended extremely quickly, mostly because of the amount of utility and party support we had in kind of one package here. I usually like starting these battles off with a quick mirage while the enemy is kind of guaranteed to attack here. And then uh, we get a very, very easy link attack to start the fight there. Allows me to get an easy, uh, perfect execution off. And then I'm going to uh, go into my uh, Nelana and uh, other ability there. And he jumps away, so I'm going to just uh, use my debuff immunity now. Which uh, isn't really necessary at the current moment in time. It does apply a drain, but we're going to get it back anyway by the time it's going to be like relevant again. Well, the good thing is we're doing a massive amount of damage here, and uh, once the Link Attack Gauge is up again, I'm going to be able to do a lot of uh, stun damage just right, like right there. We're able to get these stun really easily here. Get another perfect execution off, which uh, means Mirage is already back up. And Fairy, just being the amazing SBA bot she is, already has uh, SBA fully charged, which is really funny because I'm only at 50% myself, but oh well, it happens. So, uh... At this point, we're just kind of comboing him in such an insane degree. The break meter's already been broken. I think stun power affects that as well, so that's another kind of benefit of Siegfried, which can be really nice. I think. I might be wrong about that, but I think it does. So, uh, we're just gonna now combo him with more SBA at this point. Uh, all our other three characters finally have their SBA up. I'm gonna get mine right after this. I'm gonna try to get my uh, perfect execution off before unleashing mine, and I'm able to. So... This fight's just kind of a combo luck, almost. He's barely been able to do anything to us at this point. But I still have defensive utility in my back pocket in case I need it, but I'm just kind of holding on to it for now. And uh, I'm trying to save... Uh, usually I'll save Nelana for if we need the stun damage, but at this point in the fight, he's so low on health, I end up just using it anyway. Because he finally gets to jump to the middle here and use this attack. We see he still hasn't even triggered the Firefly Flays yet, and he's not even going to be able to... I just get some quick extra damage there, and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to pop my two uh, defense buffs at this point, because there's both debuffs that can be applied with the uh, freeze effect and uh, damage that he can deal, so I might as well just pop these just to help the party. And uh, I don't even think... Actually, Yodara does end up getting hit. He actually does end up dying. I guess he got hit by the big blast, so the defense buff didn't help him there, unfortunately. Not a huge deal. Now, I tried to use Nelana there to pop the stun gauge, but uh, Fairy kind of canceled it out by using the SBA, which means the stun gauge kind of disappeared while that was active, but it's going to come back right after this. And we pretty much immediately activate it with the last attack of perfect execution there. And uh, go into link time, which is very unnecessary. He doesn't even get to trigger the uh, Firefly phase. We absolutely annihilate him in less than uh, two minutes here. This was a very unintended speed kill, which I thought was just really funny. We even get another break here as well. So uh, really, really fast and effective fight. And uh, I don't know if that was thanks to Siegfried, but I do think I contributed at least in the way that Siegfried can in order to uh, make these fights faster. So, 
That's just kind of one example of how strong he is. There was another fight I did where it was similarly pretty fast uh, in-game timer-wise. Now, the fight itself was a little bit longer because one of the phases kind of freezes the timer, but that's not really a huge deal. It's going to show off against one of the Nihila fights here, and uh, general strategy is still much the same. I activate defense at the start of this fight, and I use uh, Nelana to kind of instantly get the Link Attack gauge up, get a Link Attack off, and uh, now I just kind of try to use my perfect executions here. So... I'm able to kind of uh, invuln a lot of his damage as you saw there. Like, even though I took some damage there, it didn't even matter because of the uh, Stout Heart and the fact that I had the defense buff up. That is one of the biggest benefits of Siegfried. Now my uh, defense did expire there before that big attack there, but luckily with the amount of health I have and just general defensive utility, it doesn't really matter too much. And uh, we're able to get uh, a nice uh, fight. We're able to get another Link Attack off really fast, able to break the Break Gauge again really, really quickly thanks to uh, the stun damage and all of the damage that we are outputting. And uh, this fight is going really south for this enemy really quickly, so... I do unfortunately do not get that Perfect Execution off because he uses a special attack at the exact moment I would have used the Perfect Execution or that I was using the Perfect Execution, which is unfortunate, but not really the biggest deal in the world. I have my defense buff ready for this phase, so I go ahead and activate it to help my allies here, since uh, this is just kind of a safe phase we're going to be getting attacked, so might as well pop that to make sure that we are okay in this phase for the most part. Even if they take some damage, they should be just fine with that 70% defense buff. So, uh, even if my allies do get hit there, you can see they are not taking much damage at all, which is one of the biggest benefits of this buff. Now, the buff's about to expire, and Narmaya doesn't get to safety, average Narmaya player. But not really a huge deal. They all, they have auto revive, so they're able to get to a safe spot afterwards, and we're just fine. I go ahead and pop Salvatore after this, since I might as well. And uh, it gives us debuff immunity during this next part of the fight here. We get another Link Attack off really quickly. Unfortunately, we did so much damage to him earlier, we're not able to get the... Uh, or EO doesn't at least use her Link Attack. Or, sorry, her SPA attack here. When she probably could have, I feel like that probably would have been better, so we could have skipped this part of the fight. But the general strategy here is the same, just activate my defense buff for the team and uh, just help them survive this attack since it's kind of a big enemy attack phase where we can't do much to the actual enemy. And just make sure we're not getting hit ourselves. So the defense buff's about to come back up. Couldn't get many perfect executions off during that window to make it come up faster, but not really a huge deal. So I'm trying to get to a point where, uh, see if I had it up there I would have been able to save the Narmaya from dying again. But, uh, not a huge deal. I'm able to get it up here, and we're just fine. I accidentally get glaciated because I didn't roll over the attack in time, but, uh... <laughs> with the defense buff, it doesn't even end up, ending up, ending up mattering. I don't even take enough damage for it to matter at all. So, another benefit of the defense buff. And if I had Salvatore up, I wouldn't have even gotten glaciated, so... You can just see here how the party utility is super nice to have with Siegfried. How even if he doesn't do the absolute most damage, the fact that he could just do so much stun damage. Like, did you see that? I just filled out almost the entire stun gauge that one attack by myself, almost. Which is absurd. So, a lot of stun damage, a lot of great defensive utility. He's just really awesome character to have, even if he doesn't do the most damage. And I think that's actually really nice. And it's probably going to be really valuable as harder raids come out. So, I do actually find this character to be a lot of fun. Now, this is the most unnecessary overkill ever. We would have absolutely killed him without this. But, you know, might as well just have everyone use their SBA for a full burst just for fun, right? So, all in all, Siegfried is a really fun character. Has a lot of great utility value. Has a lot of... Uh, Ways to reduce his cooldowns if you can land the perfect executions as well, so you can use your utility more often. Can fill up stun gauge massively fast. Is a pretty fun character to use, as I've already mentioned probably multiple times. I really like the character. I think that's going to cover it for this guide. So if you did enjoy, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I do hope you've learned something. Uh, if you want to support me, please look forward to all the future content. And uh, feel free to join my Discord if you want to be alerted when I release videos and stuff like that. I Follow me on Twitter as well. Any other way you want to support me, I would greatly appreciate it. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate all the support. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and hopefully I'll see you back here soon for future guides.